What's good my people? It's me, Jason, and I'm here to share another Bible study with you guys. As you can see, I got my blue book. If you are new to this page or you haven't seen me post any of these videos before, what I normally do in this book is write all Bible study notes. So that's across sermons that I've watched, that's YouTube videos that I've watched explain, and this is me reading my Bible and actually studying. I put everything in here. So I have so many topics that I try to write points about so I can speak about later. So I have heaps of topics in here, which I can't wait to post many videos and explain everything else. But for today will be a fresh new topic that you guys haven't heard me talk about yet. And I'll be diving deep into it, giving you guys scripture to base everything I'm saying off. Just pray that um, everything that I say glorifies God and I do this for his will and his will only. I'm not doing this for my own benefit. Now today, the topic we're gonna be speaking about is how to overcome sin. I'm gonna give you guys five points so that your battle with sin can be overcome and it will not weigh on you too much. So point number one is not to dwell in sin. Point number two is that you should understand sin is an ongoing battle. Point number three is to confess your sin to God. Point number four is to identify your triggers. And point number five is to ultimately serve the Lord. So point number one is not to dwell in sin. So we're gonna get our passages from Romans 5 verses eight to nine and Romans 3 verses 23. So Romans 5 verses eight to nine says, but God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. So in this passage, Paul is actually writing to the Roman church and he states that besides Christians being sinners, God still loves them. Christ died for us and we are justified by his blood that was shed for our sins. So despite our most recent failure and sin and how bad it may have made you feel, God still loves us. God still loves you on your best day and he loves you on your worst day. So we are all sinners like we read in Romans 3 verses 23. So Romans 3 verses 23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Because we are sinners, we need to understand that we are saved by what Jesus did for us on the cross, not by how holy or good we are. So we are saved by His grace through our faith in Him, not by works so that no one may boast. Because if we were saved by works, then people would be out here comparing how good they are compared to other people. So that's what we need to understand. And God wants us to surrender to him and understand that even though we are prone to messing up, that he wants to remind us that his goodness will always lead us to repent. We'll always feel that pain when we, when we fall into sin, so we'll end up repenting. We will make mistakes, but because of his forgiveness, we are saved. So point number two is we should understand that it's gonna be a constant battle. And we're actually gonna get this from the whole of Ephesians 6. So the whole of Ephesians 6 talks about putting on the armor of God, which I will just debunk briefly. But Paul is speaking to the church of Ephesus to put on every piece of the armor of God so that they can resist the enemy, even on a day of hardship and stand firm in his word. First, it talks about fastening the belt of truth. Then it talks about putting on the breastplate of righteousness. And then for putting shoes on your feet for the gospel of peace. Then it talks about holding up a shield of faith. Then it talks about having the helmet of salvation and carrying the sword of the spirit. Now, even though Satan may have struck you once or twice or multiple times, you have to understand it's a fight and it's a battle. So he still wants more. He still wants to come and steal, kill and destroy you. So if the enemy isn't stopping in his attacks, we shouldn't stop in our resistance. Now, point number three is to confess your sin. So we're going to be reading from the passage of 1 John 1 verses 9. So it says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. 
So here is John and he's speaking to believers, telling them that if they confess their sins, he will forgive them and cleanse them, right? But we need to be open and honest with God. Even though we fell into sin because of temptation from the enemy, we actually still chose to sin and we are responsible for our actions. But God promises that when we confess our sins, he will be faithful and forgive us for our sins as a whole. Now we must take responsibility and then confess to God and then now move on from the sin. Instead of trying to dwell in this sin, we need to move on from it. Don't live in it, don't let it weigh you down, don't let it make you feel horrible, but just move on from it, confess your sin, and make a declaration that you will not repeat this sin again. You don't wanna use this as a, as a token of unlimited forgiveness. You need to actually respect what God's giving us, you know? Point number four is to identify the triggers. So now we're going to get this from James 1 verses 14 to 15. So James 1 verses 14 to 15 says, But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire when it's conceived gives birth to sin, and sin when it's fully grown brings forth death powerful verse what james is stating in this passage is that a person is tempted when they're drawn away by their evil desires which leads to sin and then eventually to death so if you recently just fell into sin you need to do your best to learn from your failure there may have been elements present that influenced you to bite the bait and cause you to actually sin. So you need to identify these triggers. You need to see what's around you that's actually causing you to sin. Is it the people you're hanging out with? Is it the music you're intaking? Is it the shows that you're watching? What is it, right? Now to prevent yourself from making these same mistakes in the future, you must be taking notes. Like where were you when you sinned? How did you feel when you were sinning? What were you looking at when you were sinning? So the idea is to see how the enemy set up your failures and take steps to minimize your triggers, trying to prevent and dismantle repeated mistakes. Like if you're in war and your army gets attacked from a way you didn't expect, the general and the chief, the commander will come back and gather and find out a way that that doesn't happen again. That's the same way we need to do ourselves because remember, we're in a battle. So if we're in a battle, we need to prepare that it doesn't happen again. We can't keep getting attacked the same way. The last point is to serve the Lord with all your heart. And that is from 1 Samuel 12 verses 20. And it says, Samuel said to the people, do not be afraid. You have done all this evil, yet do not turn aside from following the Lord, but serve the Lord with all your heart. Now in this scripture that I just read, Samuel rebuked Israel because they wanted a king. Only because all the surrounding nations had a king, but Israel refused to recognize that God is actually their king and the leader of this nation. So even after Samuel had rebuked them, he told them to still follow God and serve him with all your heart. So if you've messed up with sin, you need to know that we can still choose to serve the Lord every day. There's so many souls that need to be saved. There's so many people that need to be encouraged. So many people that need to be taught the ways of Christ and churches that need to be uplifted and rebuilt properly. And our last verse is Galatians 5 verses 16. But I say, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. Now that passage there reminds us to walk in the Spirit as a way to actually have victory. That the flesh is actually against us and the Spirit wants us to get closer to God. So we need to start following our spirit and not so much our flesh. And when I reference flesh, I mean our worldly desires, our desires of fitting in with the world and whatever the world wants us to do. My last advice would be to replace a bad habit with a good spirit filled habit. Now I hope everything I said today after my study for what to do after you sinned has helped you guys. And if this video really resonated with you, share it, interact with it, comment, and just make sure you continue to spread the name of the Lord in everything that you guys do, the same way I'm trying to do myself. Keep praying, keep loving, until the next episode. Peace.